So hello and welcome back. Today is lecture 1-2-B on kinematics with a focus prim primarily on forward kinematics. So we have already defined forward and inverse kinematics for mobile robots. So today is all about using the instantaneous center of curvature to represent the forward kinematics for a differential drive mobile robot. And we will end this lecture series with a focus on inverse kinematics to find a robot's wheel velocities in order to move it to a certain pose in the world. So make sure you come back for lecture 1-2-C to hear more about inverse kinematics because all Today is all about the ICR. So strap on your seatbelts and get ready to learn some very cool things. So the instantaneous center of curvature or rotation has already been mentioned in these lectures. It was referred to as the ICC or the ICR. In order for a robot to roll, each wheel must roll along its X axis where the Y axis intersects at the instantaneous center of curvature or rotation, but we typically just call it the ICC or the ICR. So this is what this looks like. As the robot moves through the world, different snapshots in time will show the robot wheel rolling and the ICC center will represent a radius that we use to define the forward kinematics for the robot. So this is what it looks like. The ICR is a zero motion line drawn through the horizontal or perpendicular axis of the wheel plane, which we refer to as the Y axis. The wheel moves along a radius R with center in the zero motion, and the center of that circle is what we call our ICR. It is the point around which the robot will rotate if it's a circular course. So for example, if I have a difference in velocity for the robot wheels, and the robot continues along that path long enough, it would track out a circle. And so that radius of that circle is the center where we find the center of our ICR. But typically a robot may not go for that long. So every time it changes wheel velocities, the ICR changes, its trajectory will change. And so this image would show what that looks like. So the ICR changes over time with respect to the function of the individual wheel velocities and how those change. The larger the difference in the wheels, velocities, the smaller the radius or the smaller the circle a robot will make. The smaller the difference in the wheels, the larger the circle or ICR, and the larger the circle that the robot would make. So the instantaneous center of rotation, there are certain special cases as well. When the R is infinity, that means that the wheel velocities are equivalent and the robot is moving in a straight line. When the R is a zero, that means the wheel velocities are exactly negatives of each other and the robot spins in place as shown here. Any other case, R will be non-zero and finite and the robot will follow along a curved trajectory about a point which is a distance R from the robot's center of rotation. Note that differential drive robots are very sensitive to differences in velocity. And it's very hard to keep the two velocities of the robot wheels at the exact same value. So because of this, it makes it hard for robots to drive in a straight line. There's actually a book about this. It's called Real Robots Don't Drive Straight. And it also can be very frustrating for students because that odometry error and trying to make your robot drive straight is not always gonna be a thing. So you just calibrate it as best you can. So the ICC for the differential drive robot does have a mathematical equation and it is given by the radius of the ICC as well as the pose of the robot x, y, theta. So using trigonometry, we would say that the ICC is equal to x minus r sine theta, y plus r cosine theta. So based upon, upon the angle of the robot with respect to the global reference frame, as well as the radius of the ICC you can find the exact location of the robot with respect to the ICC or the location of the ICC with respect to the robot. So the forward kinematics for the ICR can be found by assuming that each instance of time, the robot is following the ICR with a radius R at some angular velocity omega. If we know that's true, then I can use those wheel velocities in order to get the angular velocity. And we've seen this before, where it's the velocity of the right wheel minus the left wheel divided by 2L for the angular velocity. And the radius for the ICR is the linear velocity over the angular velocity, or 
L, which represents the distance between the robot center to its wheel, times V1 plus V2 over V1 minus V2. So now, given some control parameters, typically for us, a differential drive robot that's going to be wheel velocities, it is possible to determine the pose of the robot. The position can be determined recursively as a function of the velocity and the position, right? So as the robot's moving, if I know where it is and I know its velocity, I have now discovered I can integrate in order to find its position. To solve for the ICR center at an instant of time using this information, you would have ICR X and ICR Y, where the X value is the X at that instance of time minus R sine theta, and the Y at that instance of time is YT plus R cosine theta. So using recursion, you get the following equation. The robot's pose with respect to the ICR can be found by using the rotation matrix times the position of the robot plus the ICR at that certain time. You can also expand upon this to write it in terms of the rotation matrix by putting in the cosine and sine values and then adding in the value of the ICR at that time. If I have linear displacement of my robot, then we know that the radius of the ICR is infinity. So the robot is moving in a straight line. So you can just ignore the ICR and use the following equations. X of T plus delta is XT plus VT delta cosine theta T. Y of T plus delta is YT plus VT delta sine of theta T. And theta T plus delta is equal to theta T, which makes sense because the robot is moving straight. So here's a Ford kinematics example for linear displacement. If I have a differential drive robot with L equal 5.3 centimeters that's located at 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters, theta zero degrees and T zero seconds, and the robot moves both wheels at the same velocity, two centimeters per second, and it moves forward for 10 seconds, where is the robot after 10 seconds? This graphic shows what this looks like as the robot moves forward, and using the formula that we just found, X of T plus delta would be 40 centimeters, Y of T plus delta would be 20 centimeters because the robot's moving forward. So the robot ends up at 40 centimeters, 20 centimeters after 10 seconds and the angle still zero. Now, what if the robot makes a counterclockwise turn? L is still 5.3 centimeters, but now the right wheel is at three centimeters per second and the left wheel is at two centimeters per second and the robot moves for 10 more seconds. Where is the robot after 20 seconds? And notice that this is a delta of 10 seconds because it already moved for 10. So you can solve for R and get 26.5 centimeters. Remember, R is the radius of the ICR. You can solve for omega and get 0.094 radians per second, which is our angular velocity. And then using our formula, you will see that the X location of the robot after 20 seconds is now 61.465 centimeters. The Y location of the robot is 30.95 centimeters and the angle for the robot is at 54 degrees. And here's what it looks like. Our robot went forward and then the ICR changes because the wheels now have a differential and it starts to follow along this curve and ends up at 61 centimeters, 31 centimeters, 54 degrees at 20 seconds. What if the robot then makes a counterclockwise spin? This means that the right wheel is going at two centimeters per second and the left wheel is going at negative two centimeters per second. And it spins for five seconds. Where would the robot be at 25 seconds? So first we find omega and see that omega is 0.37736 radians per second and that the robot's X location is now 61.465 centimeters and its Y location is 30.95 centimeters. So the main thing to notice is that the X and Y values don't change if it's because it's spinning in place, but what did change is the angle. And it went from an angle of 54 degrees to 162 degrees because it's spinning in place. Now, to make a clockwise turn, set the robot's wheel to three centimeters per second, the left wheel to 3.5 centimeters per second for 15 seconds. And we're gonna figure out where is the robot after 40 seconds. So this is now a delta of 15 seconds. So going through and doing your mathematics again, we now know we have a new ICR, a new radius. 
So we get X at 40 seconds is 23.52 centimeters and Y at 40 seconds is 60.55 centimeters. And the angle of the robot is now at 121 degrees. Let's see what it looks like. We started out going straight, then the robot made a turn, then the robot made a spin, and now it makes a different turn, and it now ends up at 24 centimeters, 61 centimeters, 121 degrees. And finally, the robot sets the right wheel to zero centimeters per second and the left wheel to three centimeters per second for 10 seconds. We call this a clockwise pivot. So where is the robot at t equal 50 seconds, which means delta is 10 seconds, and you see that the radius is now negative 5.3 centimeters for our ICR. Omega is negative 0.28 radians per second. And the new location of the robot is 31.5 centimeters and 67.47 centimeters. And its angle is now negative 41 degrees. I highly encourage you to walk through the formulas that we've gone over and confirm that you can get these values and that you understand how the robot moves. So here is what this final plot looks like of the robot. After going through all these different motions, our robot has ended up at 32 centimeters, 67 centimeters, negative 41 degrees at 50 seconds. And this concludes today's lecture on using the ICR to do the forward kinematics on a differential drive robot. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you're coming back for more. Make it a robotastic day.